joining us now from the State House is the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Nicholas Scutari. Mr. Chairman, good of you to join us. Uh, overall impression of the nominee today, what do you think of him? Uh, he's a very nice man, uh, pleasant to speak to. He's got a great personality, has a nice personal story. Uh, he has a lot of experience that we look for in a uh, Supreme Court justice. So those were my uh, positive impressions. You did have some concerns, I, I understand, about uh, some of his rulings regarding judge or jury on some awards. Uh, what was that all about? Well, one of the things that we hold nearest and dear to us as citizens of the state of New Jersey and this country is that we have the right to a civil jury trial. And one of the most important things that we can do is respect what a jury trial means and says about whatever it is that they do, whether it's a guilty or not guilty uh, conviction, or whether they award money or don't award money in a civil case. And uh, my, my area of inquiry was, was based on that. I think it's extremely important that our judges give great deference uh, to our civil jury trial system. Let me ask you this. A lot of people want to know, this nominee was only nominated a short period, of, and you know where I'm going with this. You have two other nominees sitting out there right now, David Bauman and, and Robert Hanna. How come he got the hearing and they haven't gotten the hearing? Well, the most important thing that we see in terms of the difference between why this, this potential candidate got his hearing first is, his does nothing to interrupt or uh, put off the balance on the court. He's replaced a Republican with a Republican. There's no doubt that uh, Justice Holmes was a Republican, and, and Judge Vina is a Republican. So that, does, that doesn't do anything to uh, disturb the balance of the court. So that's first and foremost in everyone's minds. Plus, Judge Vina had an extensive record as a 10-year veteran of the bench that we were able to review. Now, uh, we would have liked to see more written opinions, so we could have reviewed that, but uh, he did have an extensive record, and we conducted an exhaustive interview process, not just with the candidate, but with his references and other individuals that have appeared in front of him. So the process was followed to a T, and uh, the Senate did its due diligence and its duty in the hearing today. There are those who also speculate that his ethnicity might have played a role in that. What do you say to those who, who wonder about that? Well, I think you'd have to ask the governor that question as to whether or not his ethnicity played a role in terms of him getting the nomination, if that goes along with the narrative that the governor is trying to uh, facilitate in terms of national ambitions. Only he could answer that question. I can tell you that we look at the candidates on an individual basis. I don't think that it's uh, not important that we have some measure of a reflection of our citizens with respect to how people are in their uh, everyday life as well as their ethnicity. So it's nice to see that we could continue to fill those roles with people of a diverse ethnicity background. Do you anticipate at any time perhaps scheduling hearings for Mr. Bauman or for Mr. Hanna? No, I do not. And you'll wait until when to fill those seats? Well, if and when we decide to have a hearing on that, that's going to be in consultation with the Senate President and, member, uh, Senate President and the members of my committee uh, through the, our role of due diligence in the interview process and whether or not we believe that the balance on the court is going to be maintained through whether or not we give that hearing or whether another nominee is given the opportunity to appear in front of our committee. Mr. Chairman, appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. My pleasure.